After you made the big decision to go with a metal roof, you have some other big decisions to make, such as what color you're going to go with, what type of panel you're going to look for, and if your panel has structure built in. That's what we're talking about on today's Q&A Mondays. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays. We've got Adam and Jeff here on the episode today. Check out in the description all the questions that we're gonna be talking about. And we're discussing panels today, whether you should have a flat panel, whether you should have structure in your panel, kind of what that looks like and what you can expect. Um, now structure in your panel is either striations, stiffening ribs, stiffening beads, anything you see in that flat part of that panel that helps break up that flat section. What is structure? Tell me a little bit more about that and um, what does that look like for someone who's buying a metal roof? Probably the most popular of these panels with structure um, is going to be your strided panel. And that's basically, you know, throughout the surface of the panel, you have peaks and valleys. They're, they're kind of soft. They can be, um, you know, in there as light or as deep as you'd like, be more pronounced. Um, but that's, that's one of the most popular ones out there. And a lot of installation contractors will push that if it's something they can offer. You know, other options you have are clip relief, where that's right at the panel, se at right the panel seams of the vertical legs. What that does is it raises the panel up a little bit in those areas to cover over the clip that's going down. And then you have, you know, your bead rollers and your uh, B and pencil rib rollers. And usually you'll see those going basically racing stripes down the center of your panel, evened out. It's usually two going down the middle of the panel and they'll, you know, be anywhere from an inch wide to a half inch wide when you talk about beads. Um, pencil ribs, which basically looks like somebody put a pencil underneath your panel and squished it down. Um, but those are those are panels of structure. Anything that you have as far as, like you mentioned, um, a, a non-smooth flat surface in the, in the middle of your panel. So here we have a panel uh, with striated ribs right here. And you can see as I shift it in the light, you can see the... Uh, different indentations throughout the panel. And this is one type of that structure that we were talking about. And uh, did you say this was a pretty popular type, these striated ribs? Yeah, it's, it's really popular. And honestly, a lot of people promote them, you know, based on oil canning. That pattern right there probably does the most out of any of the structures to help minimize the appearance of oil canning when installing it on a roof. Yeah, let's go deeper into that. Why would someone, in addition to oil canning, go with some type of structure in their panel versus a flat panel? Yeah, well, you know, I, and I wouldn't even call it a trend, Thad, but more and more, a lot of roofing contractors and a lot of roll formers, guys that, that make panels, are requiring a waiver if you want a flat panel. And what they're looking for, is it's basically a oil canning release, you know. Oil canning is not cause for rejection in a roofing system, in a metal roofing system. However, you know, a number of factors which we've covered in our oil canning videos um, and seen in some other instances, you know, basically indicating what can cause oil canning. You know, you can compensate, you know, for, you know, poor coil or, or coil with a wavy edge or an uneven deck or clips that are showing through in the seam. You know, things that cause the appearance of oil canning, you can really compensate for that by putting structure in the panel. Um, the, the structure that you put in, you know, will dictate how much you can really kind of minimize. Striations probably uh, cover up a lot of the potential oil canning more than the other uh, types of structure that you're putting in because it's through the panel to edge to edge, where clip relief, like Jeff mentioned, is just on the edge of the panel. And that's really going to help minimize, you know, the, the transference you might see some from fasteners or clips uh, on the edges of the panels. Um, stiffening beads, stiffening uh, uh, ribs, you know, those will also help break it up. But you could still see some oil canning, whether it's coming from the transference from the clip um, or things like that. And, and, you know, Jeff mentioned striations are, are hugely popular because, you know, not just because of that, but because... You know, if you picked a any color roof, pick a pick a color, um, you can actually see that color. You know, in, in a few different lights, and and when when the light reflects off of it, 
Sometimes you might just see some glare, but you can actually see the color of the roof, you know, as it breaks up as well. And I, I think it just provides a, a really good look and, and how the various shades and how the various reflections, you know, when the, when the sun's hitting it. So another, another important thing to remember too, you know, is after your panels are formed, there's no going back and put in structure in them. Um, once the panel comes out of the roll form machine, if you decided to go with a flat panel, the panels that you have roll form, the, the, you're, you're, you have a flat panel now. There's no going back and putting striations in the existing panels that have already been roll formed. So that's another reason to think about it before you decide on what it is you're doing. Um, you know, if you have a flat panel and you put it up on your roof and come to find out that roof deck isn't as perfectly straight as everybody thought it was, and you have oil canning, there's not much you can do with that flat panel now to help minimize the effects of what you're going to see. So once once you made make a decision, you're pretty much locked into um, what you decided. Yeah, and and you know another thing about you know a flat panel, a lot of people don't mind oil canning so much. You know, as long as there's been standing seam metal roofing, there's really been oil canning with it. So um, part of it is the look inherent, you know, in metal roofing. You know, some people get it. They weren't aware of it. They weren't aware of what it would look like on their roof and really, you know, are considered unsightly. Um, but one thing to consider is that metal has a memory. And a lot of times when you're putting structure in, uh, you're concealing, you know, that what that panel wants to do or what that steel wants to do. Um, which oftentimes can be buckling or the appearance of oil canning in the panel. And oil canning, you know, one thing to consider is oil canning might look different. You know, you at 10 a.m., your roof might look, you know, smooth as glass if you've got a flat panel. As the roof heats up throughout the day, that may change and it may cause that oil canning to appear. Um, you know, another thing is, is oil canning has a tendency to dissipate over time. So, you know, a lot of times somebody might say, oh, my gosh, that's terrible. You know, I, I don't like it. But we usually tell people, hey, before you go and, and really get upset, you know, just live with it. See, see what it does over time. Like I said, metal has a memory. And as it goes through a couple cycles of seasons and has chances to expand and contract regularly, it will take on that memory of what that panel is. And some of that oil canning traditionally over time dissipates. Now, some things, uh, you know, such as really bad, you know, clip transference or fasteners, that won't go away. Really bad decks, you know, that, that really throw the panel off and, and cause the, the, if the panel looks oil canned all the time and not just, you know, depending on what time of the day it is, you know, to some degree, it'll probably maintain that oil canned look through over time. And it'll work itself out a little bit, but. Do you see a price difference normally between a flat panel or a panel with structure? You know, there, there really shouldn't be. Um, most people that are doing it, it's a quick adjustment on their machine. Um, and then it really boils down to, you know, how, how deep of beads do you want in that panel? How deep of striations uh, do you want in that panel? Okay. So generally, there's really no difference in price. Um, it's just similar to color. It's, it's what do you want aesthetically? Yeah. Now, I want to go back to something you said earlier about the waiver that some contractors have there customer sign. Let's say I'm a homeowner. I have this waiver in front of me about flat panels. Um, what does that mean? What am I signing? If you're going with a flat panel, you're almost guaranteed to have some level of oil canning. And, and we went over the reasons why. But what you're really saying is, is that, you know, this roof is going to perform, you know, structurally, uh, integrity, it doesn't impact the details, it doesn't uh, impact the performance of the roof as long as it's installed correctly. It's just that, Odds are you're going to have oil canning, particularly in re-roof situations where you've had a deck that's on there. It may have some warping. It, even in new construction, you, there's no guarantee that you're going to have a completely flat, completely in plain deck. So um, really what it's saying is that, you know, this oil canning is yours if, in fact, there is significant oil canning. And, you know, to me, if I really wanted a flat panel, you know, there's got to be a level of understanding that, yeah, there's probably going to be some oil canning. Um, and that it probably will get better over time, um, but it's just inherent in the type of roofing system that you know I'm getting and that I'm asking for. And, wh and while we're talking about it, um, you know, just to bring it up with oil can and everything else, the narrower the panel that you have and the thicker gauge material that you use, that should help also minimize some chances of oil canning 
because you know you, your the, the flat wide area of the panel is now more narrow versus a 12 inch wide panel versus an 18 inch wide panel uh, it's a little bit more rigid heavier materials they're a little bit thicker they're more rigid um, so that will help reduce oil canning as well but you're more than likely going to be paying a higher cost for thicker materials and narrower panels because material is going to be more expensive and uh, installation is going to be more because now you're going to be installing more panels in the same amount as roof surface. Yeah, and and putting more fasteners, putting more clips, more you know, just more just there's more into it. So, yep. basically, signing the waiver, you're you're playing a gamble that your roof's going to come out, you know, with the minimum amount of minimum amount of oil canning that's going to be acceptable to you. And again, a lot of that is personal preference. I mean, you know, I think a big reason why we wanted to do this video is to, you know, really say, hey, you know, if you want a flat panel, you will probably have some degree of oil canning, um, you know, and it's part of standing seam metal roofing. So, you know, if it's not a big deal to you, you know, it's probably going to be all right if you really want that flat panel look. Kind of another case for, you know, putting striations in a panel is let's say you live in a hail prone area and you get some hail. Well, with a striated panel, you have some structure to, to kind of break that up. So even if you do have some little dents or dimples in there, they're not going to be as obvious as a, as a flat panel. Yep. That, and, you know, where a flat panel may show that denting, dimpling, you know, stand out like a sore thumb, uh, where that will, in often cases, conceal it a little bit more. Yep. And, I, and I would say, too, that, you know, if you're considering you know, go with any of the structured panels or want to see what they look like and you're dealing with an installation contractor, they should have samples of what they're able to offer you as far as being able to see up close instead of just a picture. And, um, you know, this, this is just a personal opinion and I hate giving personal opinions, um, or rather state facts, but in, in my opinion, a roof with striations is it's a, it's a lot it's a lot harder to see those striations than it is to see oil canning. So oil canning, I think, stands out a lot more than the structure of striations in the panels when it comes to seeing it on the roof. When you have a striated roof up there, you know everything's uniform and everything looks the same. When you have an oil can roof, that oil can can be all over the board, and you know it's a lot more noticeable. You know, if your whole roof is striated, it looks like that's the way it's supposed to be, and it all makes sense. Keep in mind, you know, we, we talk about oil canning quite a bit. Um, you know, the lighter colors, you know, the earth tone colors, the generally don't show as much oil canning where the darker colors, the brighter colors, it's a little bit more evident, uh, you know, just based off of the color scheme. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind when you're considering, you know, if I go with the flat panel. So when it comes to flat panel uh, versus panel with structure, what does that do to your engineering? What does that do to the, you know, integrity of your roof system? Uh, it doesn't do anything. The um, the flat of the panel doesn't dictate, um, you know, the engineering. The engineering is based on gauge width of the panel, um, clip spacing, fastener types, accessories, um, putting the structure either in or not putting the structure in the panel. Uh, doesn't affect the engineering, watertight integrity, or you know, performance in any way. It's completely aesthetics. So Jeff, if I'm a building owner or a homeowner, what types of questions should I be asking my roofing contractor about striated versus flat panel? Well, I mean, one, you can ask him for examples of roofs that he's done in your area that, you know, are both smooth and with structure. You can go around and see what they look like in person. You know, seeing a picture or a one foot by one foot sample, it's hard to get an idea of the total look of your, of your roof. So go on and see it in person from the ground, not right up in your face. Um, you know, you might get a different opinion, might change opinions, might, you know, bring some new things to light. Um, you know, buying a metal roof is a big purchase, so the more homework you do beforehand, you know, the happier you're going to be with the end product. Um, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, as well as, you know, finding out what type of structures he's able to offer, you know, and seeing the patterns that they put in. Um, you know, some people put striations in the panel and they don't put clip relief. And now you have a, a two to three inch wide flat spot between the striations and the edge of the panels. You might not like that look. You might want those full striations throughout the width of the panel and then the clip relief. So the whole panel looks like it has that texture to it. Um, 
you know, there's different things they can do when they're forming the panels and putting the structure in that might give you more pattern, uh, more pattern options that you like. Ask a lot of questions. There are no stupid questions. Do your homework. Go around and see examples, different times of the day. You know, like Adam was mentioning, you know, morning versus middle of the afternoon. Um, you know, if you ride by one on your way to work, stop by one on your way home. Um, you know, and just check out all the options that you can before you decide to make a purchase um, because it's a big investment. And, you know, you want to be happy with the final product. Yeah, and, and kind of keeping in mind cost. If, if somebody says, hey, you know, your roof deck's out of plane a little bit, it's not that it's a bad roof deck. It's just it might have a wave in it. It might, you know, have a high spot or a low spot. Um, it's going to be a whole heck of a lot cheaper to put striations in your panel than try to adjust out a quarter inch over 15 feet, you know, in, in your uh, roof deck. So kind of keeping that in mind, and, and you're really not going to see that quarter inch, um, you know, with a striated panel or a panel of structure, uh, whereas if you put a flat roof, you know, put a flat panel on your roof, you might see it in the form of oil canning. Yeah. So. so we hope we answered your questions about having structure in your panel versus having a flat panel. Go check out some examples and decide for yourself. Comment down below if we didn't get to your question. We'll try to answer it in a future video. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing Channel. We'll catch you next time.